Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating a simple application that's somewhat useless, but gives us a good insight of how we can use uh, jQuery's document ready and also the window unload functionality uh, to create something uh, somewhat of a, um, a user shared application. Now, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, so I'll go ahead and uh, show you what I've done uh, with regards to this. Uh, and then we'll take a look at how it works, we'll take a look at the database behind it. We are going to be using a lot of PHP in this tutorial, uh, but then again that just shows in how you know the back-end development of jQuery is important as well, or back-end development you know, and allowing jQuery to utilize this. So I've created this page that actually just brings up a dialogue uh, asking a user to enter their name. So if I go ahead and enter my name and hit enter, you can see that my name just appears on the screen. Now you might think this is extremely simple, we've just brought up a JavaScript dialog and, and printed a name out to a page. In actual fact what this has done is it's stored my name in a database. So I've got my username here, user underscore name. So that's stored that in a database and then every half a second it retrieves new values from a database. And because it's a database or a database table based application, if we were to say duplicate this window, we would re you know receive the same prompt. So I could go ahead and then enter another name and press enter, and you can now see that uh, it says Billy and Alex. And when I return back to the uh, first tab I had open, it says Billy and Alex as well. So essentially users from uh, different locations can go ahead and enter their name and it will add it to this list. So the reason that I've created this is because it gives a good insight into how you would create something like a chat application for example uh, or showing how many users are online um, in terms of their usernames um, and then when the user would, would you know would close the window you would you would think that you know these disappear. So we've got Billy and Alex written in both of these windows. Currently Alex is in this window and Billy is in this window. If I go ahead and close off the window that Billy has logged into or typed his name into, you'll see that now in the uh, first window his name disappears. Uh, and this also disappears from the database as well. So we can go ahead and actually duplicate this tab and enter as many uh, names as possible. If we could duplicate that again, um, type in anything, Julie. Uh, and we have all three names listed in the windows, but now let's say when I close off Billy's tab, uh, the first two tabs now only contain these values uh, and Billy is deleted from the database. So this is essentially how it works. Although it's not practically usable, you know, you wouldn't use this for anything and it wouldn't be placed on a site. It gives you a good insight into how you can actually store this data, uh, relay it back to the user. We're going to be setting an interval as well of half a second uh, for this data to be updated from, a, from the database. Uh, so therefore we're going to be using PHP to actually uh, utilize this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Let me just close this off, we're left with Alex. Uh, we'll close, uh, we'll, uh, I'll you know, erase all the code and we can start uh, writing out the, um, the tutorial. Okay, so we're over to our text editor. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the database as well in this, in this uh, first part of the tutorial just so we uh, we can get to grips with what we're doing. Um, I'll take you through the files first. We've got index.php, which is just obviously our page where the names are displayed. Uh, we've got ext.javascript, which is just an external JavaScript file that I've included here into my page. Uh, and this is going to handle the prompt where the user enters their name. And then it's going to send a uh, post HTTP request to uh, a specific PHP file to put this value into the database. Then every half a second, so every 500 milliseconds, it's going to retrieve a list of users that have uh, entered the website and entered their name. So basically uh, all of the values from the database table. Um, what users will also do, uh, or what ext will also do, is when the user closes the window or navigates away from the window, it will uh, again send a request to ht, uh, sorry, to users.php, and will delete this value from the table. So we've covered all areas: the uh, the user that comes into the website, uh, the refreshing of the users list, 
and also the uh, deletion of this value when the user actually leaves the page. Uh, and obviously that's where users.php comes into. We've also got db.php which is included with uh, by users.php. Um, that's just literally so we can connect to our uh, MySQL server and uh, also select our table. So the first thing I want to do in index.php is go ahead and create an area where this data will be stored. So I'm just going to create a div ID, uh, div with an ID of, we'll just say users online. Now we're not going to touch index.php again. This is everything we need to do inside index.php. ext.js is going to handle the prompt. It's going to handle putting the uh, user list into uh, this div. Uh, so we don't need to actually you know, do anything on index.php again. So inside uh, ext.js, we want to go ahead and uh, make sure the uh, document is ready and loaded. So we go ahead and use document.ready. And inside here, we create a function. And essentially, everything in here is going to be run uh, once our document is ready, once the DOM is uh, initialized and it's loaded. So the first thing we want to do is obviously take the user's name. As they enter the website, it prompts them for their name. Now there's a few things we're not going to be covering, like the cancel button. If the user does cancel the prompt, the name will be rendered as uh, null. So null will be stored inside uh, the variable that we pass. So we've not really covered all the validation issues in this application, but it will give you a good idea of how we can uh, achieve something like this. Uh, and then you can go in, research validation yourself, uh, and check up anything else you want to do. Uh, I wanted to try and keep the tutorial as short as possible.